Hello there and welcome back to my channel. This is Swarthy Daisy with Kinfolk Chat. And in today's video, I wanted to take a look at the breakdown of my ancestry, starting with Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples. At the time of the recording of this video, which is early 2023, my ancestry results include Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples at 33%. It also includes Nigeria, Ivory Coast and Ghana, Mali, Senegal, Benin and Togo. Information on Ancestry DNA says that Cameroon, Congo and Western Bantu peoples were primarily located in Angola, Cameroon, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Namibia, Republic of the Congo and Zambia. They're also found in Botswana, Burundi, Central African Republic, Kenya, Madagascar, Malawi, Mozambique, Rwanda, Seychelles, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zimbabwe. Continuing on about this region, extending through the heart of Africa, our Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples region winds through tropical rainforest, humid savanna, and semi-arid desert. Starting about 3,000 years ago, Bantu-speaking peoples spread from an area around the border of modern-day Cameroon and Nigeria through much of sub-Saharan Africa in one of the greatest migrations in human history. Today, the region is home to unrivaled ethnic and linguistic diversity. Early History Central Africa's Congo Basin and Cameroon have been home to human populations for at least 30,000 years and more than 250 different ethnic groups can be found in the area today. Many are considered Bantu peoples. Bantu, meaning people, refers to a group of Niger-Congo languages that trace their origin back to the western border of modern Cameroon and Nigeria. The Bantu language group is among the world's most diverse, with more than 500 languages more than 310 million people speak a Bantu language. Bantu Migrations The earliest Bantu were a Stone Age people who farmed yams and oil palm. They lived on the edges of forests where resources were rich and they could supplement their diet with bush meat. As their population grew, members of the Bantu-speaking group began one of the greatest migrations in human history somewhere around 1500 to 1000 BC. Today, the migrants are usually divided into two groups. The Eastern Bantu learned how to grow grains as they migrated east toward the Great Lakes region, modern day Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. There they learned how to smelt iron and make a kind of steel. Reliable tools combined with farming and herding skills led to growing populations which kept Bantu groups moving south and in some cases back west towards the Atlantic Ocean. The Western Bantu moved south from Cameroon along the west coast of Africa in the same time frame as the Eastern Bantu, ending up in what we know today as Angola and Namibia. Recent genetic studies suggest that the ancestors of both the Eastern and Western Bantu first moved south before splitting into two groups. Bantu communities flourished and became powerful as they began to specialize in trades, trade with Arabs and other merchants, and develop standing armies. The Baganda state in the Great Lakes region became so powerful that when the British took control of Uganda 900 years later, they made the Baganda their colonial administrators and overlords of smaller kingdoms in the area. To the south lay the great Zimbabwe civilization with its fortress, architecture, and wide reach formed by the Shona settlers. The Shona displaced the hunter-gatherer Bushmen tribes and remained dominant from about 500 to 1500 AD. Even farther south, Zulu clans consolidated into a kingdom under the military leadership of Shaka and his successors battling the Afrikaners and holding the British at bay for a time during the Anglo-Zulu War in 1879. Many of the kingdoms along Africa's east coast 
or with river access, develop sophisticated trading networks with Portuguese, Arab, and Indian merchants. Landlocked kingdoms exchanged goods with other African kingdoms and groups, many of which had embassies and ambassadors. The slave trade. While much of southeastern Africa was spared the worst effects of the transatlantic slave trade, West and Central Africa, including the area from Cameroon through Angola, was not. More than half of all Africans enslaved in the Western Hemisphere came from West Central Africa. Portuguese merchants began taking slaves from the West Coast of Cameroon in the 15th century. Many individuals from the coastal regions of Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea ended up in Maryland, Virginia, and South Carolina. Because we're looking at the uh, ancestry from my Cameroon Congo Bantu side, which is mostly inherited from my maternal side, she does have roots in South Carolina, as you see here with the uh, reflected in the communities. Uh, I've also done some research on Ancestry.com, which points to one of her ancestors uh, being taken to Maryland, Virginia area. So somewhere between Maryland and Virginia. And then through being enslaved, was taken to the South Carolina area and then to Georgia. So through all of the research I've done, as well as some of the DNA matches I have, I'm piecing together uh, parts of the story. I have quite a few DNA connections through Virginia. They're distant relatives. So uh, I have maybe ancestry that shares about a fourth ancestor, third ancestor, which pretty much lines up with the individual I'm talking about in my ancestry. Uh, again, he was taken from that Maryland area, taken to South Carolina, and then on to Georgia, where he was last recorded um, as living in that area. So, yes, what I'm reading here in terms of the slave trade, some of the DNA that I've seen uh, go on and off of my reports through Ancestry and other tests, such as... Uh, the small percentage of Portuguese that was there and now it's gone. Of course, we know how this <laughs> DNA testing world works. And then I've also seen um, some Maghreb and some other um, Middle Eastern Arab kind of ancestry show up. And so that's pretty much piecing the story together as it is shown here. And then jumping over to 23andMe, you see that I have 19.2% Congolese in Southern East Africa. And as you see, I highlighted the Bantu in Cameroon. Now moving over to my living DNA results, you see that I have more Cameroonian broken down here. And I hope I'm saying this right, the Bamum people. They are uh, linked to the Bantu Cameroon people. And it is a population living on the Tikar Plain in the west region of Cameroon. So you can feel free to pause to read some more highlights about that group. Next, we see the Semi-Bantu people, and it says that my DNA has linked me to Semi-Bantu people of Cameroon who are distantly related to many other people across Africa. The Semi-Bantu people reside in portions of the Adamawa West, Northwest, and Southwest regions. They speak a number of Bantuite languages, but they don't directly belong to the Bantu language supergroup. The three major groups who speak semi-Bantu languages in Cameroon are the Bamilike, Bamum, and Tikar. The three groups share many similarities within their cultures and may have come from a common ancestral people in the past. The Bamilike originally migrated to the Cameroon from Egypt during the 13th and 14th century. Here, 3.2% Tikar 
my DNA has linked me to the Tikar people, once a great kingdom in the country of Cameroon. Today, the name Tikar is used as a blanket term used for several population groups in Cameroon. It has been used widely for different peoples and their cultures. The Tikar people are a population group living on the Tikar Plain in the Adamawa region of Cameroon. Here on Illustrative DNA, they are showing Bantu, Central African ancestry. And here it is broken down as Cameroon Bangwa. Bangwa therefore correctly refers to the people who speak Nue and inhabit the narrow strip of country in West Cameroon, which forms the foothills of the section of the East Cameroon Plateau inhabited by the Bamalike. Again, please don't attack me about the pronunciation. Next illustrative DNA highlights Cameroon Bakoko. The Bakoko, also known as the Baso, are a Bantu ethnic group in Cameroon. According to 2010 figures, they are around 111,000 of them, mostly concentrated in the littoral region in the southwest of the country. They speak the Bakoko language and are related to the Basa people. Once again, Bantu ancestry is highlighted here on Illustrative DNA. Now let's take a look at the map of Cameroon, not far from Nigeria. And here is the map of the transatlantic slave trade. And as you see from the area here in Africa where Cameroon is, we have the Bight of Biafra highlighted. So let's go ahead and look at the route that my ancestors took to get to America. So here from the Bight of Biafra, all the way across the Atlantic, over to the Carolinas, Georgia area. And then you see where my ancestors lived according to Ancestry DNA communities. Now, jumping over to the Bight of Biafra, and according to this article here, it shows that the Bight of Biafra is a region identified by Europeans and subsequent historians to describe the part of the Western African coast between the Niger River and Cape Lopez. This region encompasses the coast of several modern African nations, including Eastern Nigeria, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea and Northern Gabon. So with that in mind, it gives us context as to how my ancestors highly likely got here from Cameroon to the United States. And again, having Southern roots out of South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, Maryland, this does go along with what we have been covering in this video so far. So doing a search on where the Cameroonian slaves came from, here they highlight different areas including the Tikari region and they talk about them being Bamilike people and they accounted for over 62% of the slaves. More research highlights that the early European presence in Cameroon was primarily devoted to coastal trade and the acquisition of slaves. The northern part of Cameroon was an important part of the Muslim slave trade network. The slave trade was largely suppressed by the mid 19th century. So the Muslim slave trade network is possibly reflected in my DNA by the North African here on 23andMe, I have 0.1% and it is listed as trace ancestry but my family members also have some north african that i will share as well now looking here at family tree dna this is my great aunt on my maternal side so my mom's aunt and this shows 
the North African DNA and Middle Eastern. So she has Middle East and North Africa, North Africa, and is broken down as Maghreb and Egypt. And here research reveals that Maghreb is a region of North and Northwestern Africa between the Atlantic Ocean and Egypt, comprising the coastal plain and Atlas Mountains of Morocco, together with Algeria and Tunisia. Here are the family tree DNA results of my biological brother. We have the same parents, and he shows less than 1% Maghreb and Egypt. And again, my aunt had about 5%. My mom on Family Tree has 0%, which is really interesting. I have 0% on uh, Family Tree, but I do have less than 1% on 23andMe. So every platform is different and every relative inherits different parts of DNA. But again, that is the North African uh, ancestry reflecting in our DNA. And here, research is revealing that Arabs have lived in Africa since at least the AD 600s when people from the Arabian Peninsula conquered Egypt and Libya. Arabs eventually controlled much of North Africa. Not much is discussed as it relates to the Trans-Saharan slave trade, but here on fairplanet.org, they highlight that the Trans-Saharan Caravan concentrated on the West African region, straddling the Niger Valley to the Gulf of Guinea along the Trans-Saharan Road to slave markets in Maghreb and the Nile Basin. The voyage that could take up to three months involved inhumane conditions that saw slaves die along the way due to diseases, hunger, and thirst. An estimated 50% of all slaves in this trade would die in transit. So there you have it. I just wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive into my ancestry as it relates to the Cameroon Congo people. I still haven't even really touched the Congo and um, the Bantu as much as I wanted to in this video, but I'll definitely follow up with uh, videos that will continue to take dives into my ancestry but feel free to research more information about this group of people i have way more resources but this video would be way way too long but i just wanted to bring this to you all to highlight and see what you all thought about my research as well as to start the dialogue and the platform to help us to have conversations about the resources and the history that I shared. So please make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below. A lot of you all are very, very scholarly, very knowledgeable, and I appreciate my audience for that. So let's share. Let's see if we can uh, get together and share what we know based on our research and the knowledge that we have about the slave trade, about the Cameroonian people, about the Bantu people, about the Congolese people. Um, just whatever you have to share, please make sure to share that. Also, if you know someone doing their own research on Africa and African ancestry, make sure to share this video with them, as well as, again, leave a comment if you have any comments to add to the conversation. Make sure to subscribe if you are not already subscribed. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.